afternoon, everyone. We're just a couple of minutes away from two, so we'll be looking right to get, or sorry, we'll be looking to get started in just a few moments. Good afternoon, everyone. It's just after two, well, almost just after two. Uh, so we'll look to get started now, and then we'll also look forward to anyone else who joins us along the way. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, today's webinar, Navigate Your Job Search, is geared towards job seekers and is part of our What Works webinar series. Now, this is the first webinar to kick off in the series, so we are very excited about this. My name is Michelle Carr, and I'm joined by my colleague, Tashlin Teske. We will be your hosts for this time. We also have Corey Schenken hanging out in the background here with us, and he's taking care of any technological issues that might come up along the way. We are here today to help further equip you for the important process of starting to, or of searching for a job. In a world of ever-changing and growing careers, this can be an exciting task. That said, we understand that a job search can be overwhelming. Knowing this, we have created resources that we hope can be of benefit to you while you're looking for a new job or looking to see what opportunities and supports are available in Windsor, Essex. Through our time today, we hope to talk about local promising sectors. So what are the in-demand jobs and what are the industry tre trends? We'll also touch on some Workforce Windsor Essex resources that might be helpful to you, such as Your Job Search, which is a guide that has tips on how to come over, sorry, on how to overcome barriers when looking for a job. We also have We Jobs and We Search. Uh, we'll go over the basics of using labor market information. This is a phrase that we talk about often, but what is labor market information and why is it important to you? And then we'll also cover skills that employers have told us they are looking for in the people that they hire. Now we have a lot of information to cover in this hour, so we will try to keep this webinar moving at a good pace. That said, if you have any questions at any time, please feel free to type them into the question and discussion box that's on the right hand side of your screen. We will pause at different parts throughout the webinar to answer questions along the way. We will also be posting a recording of the webinar on our website and you should receive it in a follow up email as well. Um, if you need a refresh of any of the topics or if you missed anything and want to go back to it, you'll have the opportunity to do so through this recording. Throughout this webinar, we may reference handouts and resources, and you'll be able to download these in the side panel shown on your screen under the handouts section. Additionally, one of the handouts will include links for all of the resources that are mentioned in our time today and that we'll go through on our website as you'll see on your screen. 
So without further ado, Tash Lin, why don't you get us started in today's webinar? So to start it off, you may or may not be familiar with who Workforce Windsor Essex is or what we do. So Workforce Windsor Essex serves the Windsor Essex region as the local employment planning council. So our mandate is to plan, facilitate, and advocate for regional workforce development. So essentially what that means is that we collect information on trends in the labor market and share our findings and resources to help employers, job seekers, educators, and community organizations be more aware of what's happening and in turn be more successful. The first section that we'll take a look at today is our promising sectors. Oftentimes we are approached with questions related to in-demand jobs. What are the promising sectors and what industries are currently hiring? Our list of local promising sectors includes the sectors that you should see on your screen. As you see, we have construction, professional, scientific and technical services, healthcare and social assistance, manufacturing, repair and maintenance, and education. We'll go through each of these sectors in a bit more detail so that you can be more aware of what, of exactly which positions are in demand and what the future of these sectors looks like in Windsor and Essex County. So the first sector we're going to look at is construction. So as you'll see on the slide, it has almost 8,000 people working in Windsor Essex right now. So that number at the top for jobs, that's the number of people currently working in this sector. So as you may know, we have a few large construction projects coming our way, including the Gordie Howe International Bridge and the Mega Hospital, and eventually a high-speed rail line. So for the first project, the bridge, there will be specific roles required, such as iron workers and heavy equipment operators, as well as numerous additional roles that will be required for the full infrastructure needs, such as carpenters for building the toll booths or plumbers and HVAC workers to complete the customs offices. Right now, there are almost 8,000 people working in construction, with that number expected to grow greatly once these projects are started. It is important to keep in mind that those who work on the bridge project will likely have the skills and experience to work on the mega hospital as well, and possibly the high-speed rail. So right now is a good time to enter the sector because of the consistent work that is expected. So of the jobs that are the most in demand, we have construction trades laborers, heavy equipment operators, electricians, carpenters, and iron workers. So for those who are interested in the sector, we would advise that you take a look at our Help Bridge Your City resources, which provide an overview of the occupations that will be needed for the Gordie Howe International Bridge, as well as the skills needed for each of the positions and where you can access local training programs. So this is one of the handouts that you'll see um, listed on the side panel. The next sector that we'll take a look at is professional, scientific, and technical services. Now that's a mouthful if you have to say it more than once in the same sentence. A large part of the sector is the technology industry, which can involve anything from mobile app development to software development to social media or graphic design. It is an ever-changing sector with new jobs, such as a social media writer, popping up all the time. We have a number of larger and smaller firms involved in tech in our region, and many community members are employed across the border as well. In fact, we have over 6,000 residents in Windsor and Essex County who commute to the states each day for work, and tech is a large sector that is represented within that 6,000 number. It is important to keep in mind that though tech workers Sorry, it is important to keep in mind that tech workers don't just work in the technology industry. They work in all sectors. Every other industry uses tech devices, such as electronic cash registers in stores and restaurants, automated equipment on auto assembly lines, or robots in the operating room. While tech workers may not be the person operating each of these machines, they may be responsible for designing the machine or providing maintenance if necessary. This sector does not only include tech workers, though. It also includes jobs like engineers, lawyers, and architects. So as you can see on this slide, there's 4,128 people working in the sector in our region. And the top five occupations that are expecting growth include mechanical engineers, 
information systems analysts, biological engineers, paralegals, and computer programmers and interactive media developers. Now, if you are interested in this sector, then you should definitely check out the Windsor-Essex tech sector section of our website. And there's a bit of a screenshot of it there on um, your screen. Here you'll find our recently released tech report, networking opportunities, videos of local companies, and information on how you can learn more about tech in our region. Our next sector is the healthcare and social assistance section, sector. So this sector is currently experiencing what is known as a silver tsunami, which will have us witnessing an increase in retirements in certain occupations, as well as an increased demand for healthcare services with our aging population. So when most people think of the sector, they first think of doctors and nurses. However, there are many behind the scenes jobs that are involved in the sector as well including maintenance, counseling, and culinary positions. So with the increase in needed support for our aging population and those requiring mental health services, the need for support workers such as social workers, counselors, and home care providers is increasing as well. So right now there are over 20,000 um, people working in this sector and the occupations expecting growth are registered nurses, nurse aides, food counter attendants and kitchen helpers, social and community service workers, and nursing coordinators and supervisors. The next sector that we'll take a look at is manufacturing. And the first thing that I'd like you to draw your attention to is the number of jobs that's at the top of your screen there. Over 30,000 people are working in this sector in our region. Now that's the largest number that we're going to be speaking of in all of the sectors that we're talking about today. So manufacturing does make up a large part of our local workforce. People often feel that manufacturing is dark, dirty, and dangerous, and they just really don't want to go there. That said, technological advancements have made manufacturing facilities safer, cleaner, and more innovative places to work. With the implementation of robotics and automation into their processes, a whole new set of jobs have opened up in the sector, with new jobs being created all of the time. It's also important to keep in mind that while the auto industry plays the largest role in this sector, there are also facilities that are producing food products, pharmaceutical materials, and furniture. One of our favorite examples of this comes from a local company called Radix Inc. A few years ago, they were hired to create the system of lasers that is used to do quality control of gummy bears. And that is something that you might not necessarily associate manufacturing with. So the top five occupations that are expecting growth in this industry include laborers in metal fabrication, machining tool operators, industrial engineering and manufacturing technologists and technicians, plastic products assemblers, finishers and inspectors, and metal products machine operators. So we live in a car driven area, which is exemplified by the large manufacturing industry that Michelle did an overview for. So there will always be a need for repairs, particularly a high demand for truck and trailer repair, which makes the sector of repair and maintenance so important. So while most mechanics specialize in small automobiles, there's a huge need for those that are trained and certified to work with large tractor trailers and heavy equipment such as tractors. While these mechanics or sorry, without these mechanics, the transportation and agriculture industries can suffer simply due to a lack of working equipment. As well, specialized cleaners are in demand. So if you think about how dirty the inside of your own car can get, imagine the inside of a tractor trailer and the materials that they are carrying. So possibly hazardous materials, foods, seeds, any of that, as well as going across the border with them. So those trailers need to be cleaned before they are able to carry anything new. So right now there are over 2,000 people working in this industry um, with many occupations expecting growth, including welders, auto service technicians, truck and bus mechanics, and mechanical repairs, specialized cleaners, laborers in metal fabrication, and contractors and service ser supervisors sorry, of these mechanic trades. Now the last sector that we're going to talk about is education. Now, this might come as a surprise to you, and education is something that has been on part of our promising sectors in the past, and it's something that has then been taken away, and now it is back on our list of promising sectors. 
Retirements in this sector and an increase in our population due to immigration is driving up enrollment in our local schools. French speaking staff continue to be in demand in this sector. It is important to keep in mind that this sector is not just made up of teachers, but just as we saw in healthcare, there are many people working behind the scenes in education, including maintenance and janitorial staff, teaching assistants, and support workers. As you can see on the screen, the top five occupations expecting growth include elementary and secondary school teacher assistants, post-secondary teaching and research assistants, secondary and elementary school teachers and educational counselors, janitors, caretakers, and building superintendents, and elementary school and kindergarten teachers. So now that we've given you a broader overview of the sectors that are in demand, we're going to take a closer look at specific jobs that are in demand, many of which are involved in multiple sectors. So one of our more recent projects is our top 76 in demand jobs list. So after meeting with employers and discussing the jobs that they are consistently in need of, and by scanning through online job postings, we created a list of the top in-demand jobs. So as you can see here, this is um, a shot of our website. So right now on the in-demand jobs and career profiles list, which you can find under the job seekers tab, if you scroll down, you'll see these full list of our career profiles that are available for all of the 76 jobs. So if you click on, say, a food service supervisor, it'll open up um, a PDF of the career profile. So all of these jobs will cover um, a brief job description, um, wage and salary information that is found locally, the skills that are required um, as notified in all of the job postings, the daily job duties, the working conditions, and the possible career pathways, as well as the education and, a training, and training that is available from all local educational institutions, whether long-term or short-term. So if you take a look at the career profile, or the, sorry, the career pathway, you'll see it's sort of a map style so this is important because for instance if you wanted to become a restaurant supervisor which you can see here um, if you don't have any experience in the restaurant field you're not likely to get a management role right away so something using these maps you can see that if you kind of follow the lines backwards maybe you want to start as either just a dishwasher to get basic training or maybe as a food counter attendant in a fast food restaurant. So this kind of shows you um, either moving backwards where you can start, or for instance, if you're already in a serving position here, you can follow these lines to become even the owner of a restaurant over time. Once you gain experience, develop new school, new skills, things like that. So this is a great tool that's available within um, every career profile. So something else that is really neat to learn um, when you're looking um, at these profiles is you'll see a red link that it might be associated with some of these. So they're not available for all of them yet, but we are working towards that. And these are our workforce profile blogs. So if you open up the one for a chef, you'll see we feature David and he is a chef at Bread Meets Bread, which is downtown. So if you read through this, you can see how he got interested into cooking. Um, see nice pictures of the food <laughs> and the workplace might make you hungry as you scroll mm -hmm. through it um, and see basically why he got into this, how he got into this, what his day-to-day -day job looks like, um, what training he took and how that prepared him and what advice he provides for different people that are looking to become chefs or get into the restaurant world. So this is a great tool that's available um, for most of the jobs, but again, we're still um, making those. We have new ones every week. Um, if you want to fo follow us on social media, um, under everything, we're at Workforce Windsor Essex. Um, you can find a new one of these on our Workforce Wednesdays. So as well, stay tuned for the launch of our We Explore tool on April 12th. So this tool will provide a more encompassing and interactive view of all of the career profiles or sorry, career pathways that are shown within the profiles. So information from the career profiles, including job description, skills, and salary information, 
for each of the in-demand jobs will also be linked in the tool as well. We are super excited to launch the We Explore tool and we can't wait for all of you to be able to see it. All right, so as you are searching for employment, you may find that you are facing some barriers along the way. Barriers to employment can be different for everyone. Examples of barriers you could be facing include a lack of transportation, limited access to childcare, or a lack of Canadian work experience. If you need tips to overcome these barriers and others, you may want to check out your job search. Your job search is a project that we did last year and it should be visible on your screen. This guide highlights various ways to overcome different employment barriers. So we'll take a brief walk through it. As you can see, there are some success stories of individuals who have accessed employment services in our region. And as we continue to scroll down, there's tips for um, overcoming barriers for newcomers to Canada. ideas for people who are receiving Ontario Works, information for recent post-secondary graduates, and then also information for individuals who, are, who feel that they are unemployed. So if you're unemployed, that means that you might not be, or sorry, underemployed. <laughs> if you are underemployed, you may feel like your current job does not make full use of your skills, experience, and knowledge. Also in this booklet, we have a section on what is labor market information, which we will be exploring further as we go through this webinar. There's some further tips on how to find labor market information. And then we also have this job fair guide. We know that there are a number of job fairs within our community, and we want job seekers to be as prepared as possible when going to these job fairs. So there's tips on what you should be doing before the job fair, what you should be doing on your way to the job fair, because believe it or not, there are some important things to keep in mind there. Um, what you should think of while you're at the job fair, and then what type of follow-up you should do once you leave the job fair. And as you can see, we have little check boxes next to each item so that you can go through and check each of those things off as you do them. So for those that are finding themselves overwhelmed by all the different job posting sites out there, we have a service called WeJobs. So WeJobs is a service that provides job seekers with an almost daily list of all of the job opportunities in Windsor, Essex. So our WeSkills department searches through many local employer websites and job search sites to provide local residents with up-to-date and accurate information. So we have an example of what you'll receive in this email. So this is just one day's worth of job postings, which really shows why people get overwhelmed. So all of these, um, this is just the top summary showing what jobs and the employers. And as you scroll through the list, you'll find more details about each of these positions and a link to how you can apply. So if you are looking to sign up for WeJobs on our website under the Job Seekers tab, you'll see down here at the bottom, sign up for WeJobs. And as you scroll down, you'll just put in your name and your email and then select here for job postings and job fairs. So as long as you check off that box, um, you'll be um, sent these on almost a daily basis. So in addition to all of these job postings, you'll also receive information on local short term training opportunities and any local job fairs. If you find that you are unsure of what services are available to you, you may benefit from using our research tool. This tool provides a path to services or resources that you may be looking for based on your needs. So we'll do a little demo of this tool now. Again, this tool is accessible on our website. There we go, bringing it on up. <laughs> All right, so when we're starting on the main page of WeSearch, you would select the type of information that you are looking for. So let's say that we are looking for a new job. So we just click through that and it says, are you currently working? So we would say that we are unemployed in our made up example. 
All right. So if we wanted to, we could take some time to learn more about employment insurance or Ontario Works. But for now, we're just going to skip this step. And then we get to decide if we want online help. So perhaps we want to stay at home one day and access help online, or perhaps we feel like we want to get out and meet with someone face to face. So let's go get some in-person help. Now there are a number of different organizations that would provide the type of help that we are looking for. And so these next questions try to make that list a little smaller by just giving a few more details. So this list asks if we're any of those populations. And so for the purposes of this, let's just say none of the above. We'll keep it very general. All right, and from there we have access to two different buttons. We have an Employment Ontario Service Provider button, which will provide us a list of those. And then there's also private employment agencies. So if we click on, let's say the Employment Ontario Service Provider button, you'll see that we have a list of organizations that we can choose from. Now let's say that we don't know any of these organizations um, and we're not sure what, to, what one to choose. We could select the bottom button, which says, help me choose by location. So if we click on that, we'll be able to type in where we are currently located. Well, right now in our office, we are located in Windsor. So let's go with that one. And then, oh, there's a lot of them that are offered in Windsor, which is great. Um, there are services all around that are able to provide assistance as you are looking for employment. So this is a tool that can be used to find support for businesses and services to help those who are looking for employment or are looking to upgrade their skills or to find out more information about things like apprenticeships or the local labor market information. So we just did one pathway in this um, sample, but there are many different types of questions and options that you can explore um, as you work through the research tool. So now we're going to delve a bit deeper into what labor market information or LMI is. So labor market information is any information related to workforce trends, occupations, and career exploration. So essentially everything in this webinar is a piece of labor market information. So this includes average wages of local jobs, news articles of businesses opening, statistics on the employment and unemployment rates, and much more. So while some of this information may seem unnecessary to you in your job search, it can actually be very, very useful when looking for a job. So for example, knowing the average wage of a job you are interviewing for will ensure that you are receiving a competitive wage and know what you can potentially negotiate for if necessary. Um, knowing about new businesses opening may give you a head start on which businesses to approach when looking for new opportunities. Um, this way you can apply for a position or meet with the owners before they open so that you are able to start right away. And knowing the current unemployment rate will let you know how many other people in the region are looking for work. So while this number may be discouraging if the unemployment rate is high, meaning more competition for jobs, it can help to make sure that you are aware of the level of competition and start thinking about more unique ways to approach employers so that you can stand out from other candidates. So being aware of labor market information just makes you more aware of what is happening in the region and helps you better prepare for your job search. So to find more LMI like this, if you go on our website, and we'll show you quickly. Um, you'll see our local labor market information landing page. So you'll see here all of these large blue buttons are links to interactive reports um, that we have. So for instance, if you click on our job demand report, this is a monthly report that's put out and it gives you basically an overview of what are the trends in job postings. So you'll see here the top occupations by job postings. So this essentially means um, that these jobs are most commonly posted for, and it shows you the median salary and the number of postings. Um, so over the last month, you'll see that there were 191 job postings for transport truck drivers. So this just gives you more specifics on how in demand certain jobs are. Um, further scrolling, you'll see um, um, the top technical skills that are looked for um, based on the number of postings. So here you'll see that 150 postings required Microsoft Office. So by looking at this, um, 
it just helps you know what skills um, that you should be promoting on your resume that will be picked up by job postings um, or maybe some skills that you want to work on. Additional, additionally, you can see um, the number of postings by municipality. So this might help if you are in Windsor to know that the majority, so 73% of jobs are in Windsor, but also if you um, are in any other municipality, um, for instance, Leamington has 11%. So just kind of knowing what is going on um, in each of the municipalities and what's happening and available to you. Ooh. Our circles are moving around here. Um, so again, there is soft skills that are important that we'll be discussing a bit more. So which ones are most um, in demand as well as the top sectors and job types um, that are available to you. So a more specific piece of labor market information that can be helpful in your job search is a review of wages. So this is also located on our main LMI page. Um, so basically looking at the median wages that are paid locally for various occupations. So they, we have a huge table on our website, so this can be very overwhelming, but there is a search option. So basically using this table will make sure that um, any of your expectations of wages for any job that you're interested in is realistic. So you can search on the top. So for instance, Wilder. So you can search that and see here that the median wage or the wage that is most commonly provided is um, about $22 an hour. So if you maybe thought a Wilder made more or less, this just makes sure that you have a realistic expectation when you're going um, to look for a job or looking for a promotion into um, becoming a Wilder. So just making sure that um, your lifestyle lines up with the jobs that you're looking for and what's available to you. When we speak with employers, they mention that there are a few different categories of skills that they take into consideration when they are looking to hire someone. Um, but actually, before I get into more information on skills, one of the things that we haven't mentioned yet is that the majority of this information, as you can see, it's all on our website, but it's all free information. So there's no charge to use any of these services or to sign up for any type of email lists. And um, a lot of these resources are also available in French. So if French is your first language, or if you know someone who speaks French and reads French, then um, certainly guide them to our website and they'll be able to access um, that information afterwards. All right, so now that we go back to skills, I think Tashlin's just taking care of a few questions. We're just trying to keep pace here to see if there's any questions um, that we can take care of along the way. All right, it doesn't seem like there's anything. She'll type in some responses to those questions. They seem to be like more related to people's individual experience with the webinar. All right, so now that we can take a look at the skills that employers are looking for, we'll talk about the different categories of skills. As you can see on your screen there, there are three different skills that are mentioned. Firstly, we have foundational skills. Now these are the basic skills that are needed to succeed in a position. And now this might include something like basic math, being able to read and write, or knowing how to listen. The next type of skill, I'm going to hop over that one in the middle and go to technical skills. Technical skills are advanced skills that are needed to perform a certain task. Oftentimes, these skills will require additional education and training. Examples of technical skills include blueprint reading, forklift driving, and computer programming. And then the skill in the middle is what we'll focus on now, and those are soft skills. So when we speak with job seekers and students, they often ask questions about what employers are looking for and how they can set themselves apart from the crowd. To this, we always respond with, show off your soft skills. Soft skills are the more personable and workplace skills that are very important. Simple examples may include things like good oral and written communication, working well with others, being on time, et cetera. Employers are looking for the candidate that is going to be great to work with and to have in the office. While it is important to have completed any necessary training or education for the job and to have developed the proper foundational and technical skills, years of experience can be overshadowed by a great personality and professionalism. 
You might be looking for your first job or a change in career, and your competition for jobs may be with people who have worked in the industry for many years. But if an employer feels that you are going to be a better fit in their office, they may want to take a chance and hire and train you instead. So let's take a closer look at some of the specific skills that employers have talked to us about. All right, so there's a long list here. It looks like the bottom one might be getting caught off a bit, but we'll go into more detail on that one when we get there. All right, so to start off, oral and written communication skills. So knowing how to have a conversation with someone, being able to answer a telephone or knowing how to properly write an email is an excellent um, skill set to have. Punctuality, so that refers to showing up on time. Oftentimes we say that showing up on time is showing up late. So it's important to um, be ready to be at your workplace, maybe five or 10 minutes ahead of time, perhaps even further ahead of time if you're going for an interview of something of that nature. You never know what you might um, run into along the way. Perhaps there's a train that stops you or perhaps you have challenges finding parking or you just can't figure out where the building is that you need to go to. Now, they're also looking for people who have a good attitude. So you might not like the job that you're doing. Perhaps it's not your favorite thing or your dream career. However, having a good attitude can really change your work experience. And that's something that employers really want to see. And you can think of probably experiences that you've had where you've gone into stores and perhaps there's been someone behind the till who just doesn't really acknowledge that you're there, perhaps they're distracted doing something else, or they just seem to really hate their job. And that just makes the experience as a customer not a great one. So even if you don't like your job, or if it's not perhaps what um, your end goal is for your um, for your a long career of longevity, then um, consider having that good attitude regardless. And you never know what that might change within your working environment along the way. And floors are also looking for individuals who are willing to learn. So you may think that once you're done school, you're done learning. However, learning is a lifelong process, especially with technology and how it is really changing the way that we work. So have that willingness to learn a new skill or take an online course or go to um, a day session to learn something new. Employers love to see that you have that willingness to learn something new and then bring what you're learning into the work environment. Employers are often are also looking for individuals who can speak more than one language, especially in our community where we have so many diverse languages that are spoken. If you're able to speak more than one language, always consider putting that on your resume. Employers are also looking for um, individuals who are reliable, so knowing to show up. For, so if you're not feeling well day, sorry, if you're not feeling well one day, um, knowing that you need to call in and let your employer know that, et cetera. Employers are looking for people who can work well on a team and individually. So as you can hear, there's two and then there's a third one of us from Workforce Windsor Essex working on this webinar alone. A lot of the work that we do at Workforce Windsor Essex is in a team setting, but it's also important that we know how to do tasks on our own without being um, directed or without having other people there to help us do something. Employers are also looking for individuals who know how to take initiative. So what does that mean exactly? So initiative is doing something perhaps without being asked, as long as it's within the scope of what you're allowed to do. So a simple example would be, let's say we work somewhere at the mall, we're at a clothing store, and we notice that there's some garbage on the floor. We could say, oh, well, the custodian will be around soon to take care of that. Or we could take the initiative and go ahead and clean that up so that it doesn't interfere with customer shopping experiences. Employers are also looking for individuals who are flexible and adaptable. Now, for me personally, this has been the biggest learning curve. I am a very scheduled person and I, and I like things to go according to plan. However, in the world of work that we do, I have very quickly learned that that is not necessarily how things go. I might have a day scheduled out to go a certain way and then by the end of that day, every single one of those things has actually gone very differently than what I anticipated it would. So it's important that you're able to go with the flow. So if a meeting or if a work task changes, being able to adjust quickly to that and continue on with the work that needs to be done. Employers are also looking for individuals who have work experience. So this could be a part-time job, perhaps it was a job you had growing up, or perhaps it includes things like volunteer work. Volunteer work does count towards um, having experience in the Canadian work setting, and so that's certainly something to highlight. 
There's also opportunities for students um, to, and some individuals who are looking for work to take part in different internship or experiential learning opportunities, um, going on tour to learn more about local companies, et cetera. So those are all great ways to better familiarize yourself with our local work environment. Employers are also looking for individuals who know how to dress appropriately for the job. So what you wear to work at a doctor's office might be different than what you wear to work at a construction site or at a daycare. So it's important to know what the dress code is for your working environment. Uh, sometimes it can even be something that's weather dependent. I know a few years ago, I had the opportunity to go out and interview some students who were working on building a home. So I, it was the middle of winter and I wore my dress coat my dress winter coat, however, um, I forgot that when you're building a home, the home isn't built so that you can go in and actually be somewhere warm. So I was shivering the whole time outside in the snowy cold weather, and I definitely had not dressed appropriately for the weather that day. So weather is certainly another consideration to keep in mind, especially in Canada when we have snow at the beginning of spring. <laughs> It's also important that you know social media boundaries. And really what this means is that you know how to use social media wisely. So things like being cautious as to what you have about your personal life on social media. You wanna make sure that you have a professional image that is reflected about yourself on social media as many employers um, often do search for potential candidates online. So if they know that you're coming in for an interview, they might put your name into Google and see what comes up. So be cautious as to what you have posted and who can see what. Also be mindful of what your employer has said that you can post about the company online. So we've heard some stories of individuals who have loved a job and they've posted really great things about their work, but have forgotten that when they signed their initial contract that there was a, a small line there that said something about how they wouldn't associate themselves with the company that they're working for on social media. And so as a result, we've heard of people losing jobs over this. That said, if you know how to use social media well, that can be a huge asset to companies. Companies continue to learn more and more about how they connect with current customers and potential future customer customers through social media. And so if you have that skill set, that's a huge um, benefit that you can bring to a company. So make sure that employers are aware of that. And social media, you can also um, connect with potential employers on social media through things like Twitter. So if there's a company that you want to work for and you see that they have a lot of engagement online, uh, you could tweet back at them or respond to one of their tweets, etc. And that shows that you are engaged in that setting. Finally, another skill set to keep in mind when you're looking for a job is transferable skills. Transferable skills are skills that you may have developed in school, home life, or at a previous job that can be used in the new job that you are looking to get. For those who do not have any past work experiences or you're looking at jobs that are not directly related to the jobs you've had in the past, these skills can be very important. For example, a recent graduate may reference their time management, organization, and ability to meet deadlines with examples of how they handed in school assignments on time, balanced their work and extracurricular activities, and kept their notes and assignments organized in a personal filing method. If you're a very organized student. <laughs> For someone who is taking care of a child, siblings, or an elderly family member at home, they may promote their patience, their ability to plan, and supervisory skills that they gained through babysitting younger siblings, planning their week around appointments and activities, and remaining calm through the hardships of caring for others. When referencing past work experience, think about the activities that you did that may be similar to activities of a new job. For example, if you were a food server or a bartender in the past, your ability to deal with customers, work under pressure, and sell products can be transferred to other sales jobs in any industry. Identifying these similarities in past and future work will allow you to better share about your capabilities in future interviews. So as we are nearing the end of this webinar, we know that this was a lot of information. It might be slightly overwhelming. So if anybody has any questions, um, just feel free to submit them in the side panel and we'll start taking some questions. All right, we're just taking a look through here catching up on some questions that have come up along the way. Oh. 
Okay, so um, as we mentioned, there are handouts attached on the side panel. So if you wanted to download any of those, they are there. Um, one of the handouts, as you'll see, is a resource list. So that has um, a link to all of the web pages that we showed um, today, as well as the link to our website. As well, there's a handout for um, a copy of your job search um, of the food super food service supervisor career profile, our skills matrix, which may be helpful uh, as well, and um, a copy of the Help Bridge Your City um, occupations list. Again, all of these are available in English and French on our website. All right, we have a couple of questions that are coming through here. All right, so one of the things that um, we actually didn't touch much on, but is very important, is the importance of networking. So networking is connecting with the people who you know about the type of work that you are looking for. And networks are oftentimes how people can find employment. So. Um, for example, the reason that I ended up in the job that I'm in is because an individual who I went to school with had seen the work that I had done on a project, and as a result, she connected me to Workforce Windsor-Essex. And so that is an example where I had no idea that Workforce Windsor-Essex existed, but through my unknown network, I hadn't realized what networking was at that point in life, um, but through that, I was able to end up in the job that I've currently had for the last several years. And so it's important to keep in mind that people that you know, the people that you're connected to, you can further build your network through things like volunteering and through um, even just talking with neighbors and family members in your life, sharing with them about the types of jobs that you're interested in. They might be connected to employers you don't even realize. A lot of employers oftentimes before they'll um, post a job outside of their office, they'll send emails around their office and say, hey, we have this job that's coming up. Does anyone know anyone who would be a good fit for this that they could recommend? And so through networking, you might be able to be connected to a company that way as well. And many of the other questions are regarding getting a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. So in a follow-up email that will be sent to um, everyone tomorrow, um, in that email will be attached um, this full recording with the PowerPoint. Um, so if you want to maybe review at a later date the full thing or if there's just a section that you wanted to kind of replay um, that will be available to you in that email. So as there are no more questions, though if any questions come up here is um, mine and Michelle's contact information so feel free to email us or give us a call here at Workforce Windsor Essex um, and we can either show you some additional resources put you in touch with any of our contacts if you um, are looking for any more support in your job search um, or anything else we can help you with. All right thanks for listening everyone we hope you have a great day.